But uh, I'm John Warren. I'm the Director of Admissions. Thank you for joining us today for this evening for the Middle School Virtual Open House. A uh, couple introductions. Uh, Shaka Arnold is the head of the middle school. Um, it looks like he's in a Panera uh, with, uh, he's, he's also a father of, of uh, four children here at the school. And, uh, and so he is the, I bet he's probably driving around taking someone to sports practice or something. Is that right, Shaka? Yes, my, do yeah, my daughter's at volleyball practice. So, and <laughs> I, I want to tell you that I'm dressed down. Today we had a dress down day. So I have a jersey on and I'm wearing my mask because that's what we do when we're anywhere other than at home. Um, so, because we want to be able to be at school. So excuse the mask and the jersey, but you know, it's, it, this is what we, this is what we have to do so we can do what we want to do. That's right. Um, and Susan Carter, who's the Dean of, of Students in the middle school. Uh, Susan started in 1980, what, what is it? 1987. 1987, holy smokes. Yep. Um, so Susan's been, been here for, for quite a while. She started our after school program and uh, is a, has taught many different things here at this school. Uh, so, uh, and has uh, two graduates of, this, of the school, one of whom is actually uh, back teaching in the middle school. Uh, so she has a son, Matt, who uh, teaches sixth grade social studies. Um, and she can talk to, talk to you all about the, uh, the Greek naval battle, which is a, a big, a big uh, should do, a big to do in the, uh, in the sixth grade. Um, so this evening, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a newly released uh, video that is uh, that I often talk uh, to families about. And uh, and then we're going to move from there. Uh, Shaka and Susan will talk a little bit about the middle school program, and then we'll have lots of time for questions. Uh, as I say, please feel free to put questions in the in the chat, uh, as they occur to you, we may not make we may not, we may not get around to answering them until kind of an appropriate uh, time comes in. But uh, look forward to to having all this work. So uh, I'm going to start off with this video. Please uh, give me a thumbs up again. I, it worked before, but I would like to make sure it works uh, one more time. Um, and. I guess that's as big as I can make it. Huh. You can press the the, <clears throat> the most right hand. See the four arrows that go out at the bottom. Uh, uh, oh, where, okay. there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, all right. So here's uh, here's uh, you know again, you guys are are the guinea pigs. Um, When I speak with a family about Columbus Academy to give them a bit of context before a tour, I often talk about the six pillars of the school. I entered in fourth grade at Academy in 1971, so I've been around a while. I've seen the school evolve over that time, so I speak of these pillars in chronological order. The first pillar is unparalleled academics. Since 1911, Academy has done a wonderful job of preparing the students for college and beyond. Our average graduate has taken four advanced placement exams with an average score of four. Our curriculum is advanced and the teachers are adept at differentiating instruction. So we challenge students in healthy ways. Our students enjoy learning and appreciate their faculty as mentors and advisors. Our middle schoolers say how well prepared they are to be upper schoolers. And then after matriculating to college, our graduates routinely report their preparation for college was terrific. Next pillar is athletics. Of course, participating in sports is not required, but the philosophy of healthy mind and healthy body has been an important part of the academy since its founding. We have a tradition of strong athletics here. Interscholastic sports begin in sixth grade and about 80% of our students participate in at least one sport each year. Beyond being fun, being on a team reinforces the value of collaboration, communication, hard work, and delayed gratification all important 21st century soft skills that students need to be successful. 
The third pillar is the arts. Both fine and performing arts are vibrant and key pieces of an academy student's life. The middle school curriculum offers fine arts and creative expressions, which is a drama class, every single year. Sixth graders are required to take concert band, choir, or orchestra. Of course, those opportunities continue into the upper school where our band, orchestra, plays, and choir wow audiences and win accolades for their performances. The fine arts offerings are more varied in the upper school where ceramics, photography, painting, and drawing are our most popular electives. The incredible artwork they create is exhibited regularly in the gallery. The fourth pillar is community service, which has grown in importance and vibrancy, particularly in the last 30 years. Academy actually has a service department, like there's a math department and an English department. Our service department works to ensure that the school's commitment to serve others runs throughout our curriculum beginning in the lower school and is coordinated through until graduation. It's worth mentioning that each year the Upper School Service Board is the largest club on campus. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is the fifth pillar. Academy was one of the first schools to hire a full-time director of diversity, and our commitment to working to be an inclusive community is strong. A quarter of Academy students receive tuition assistance. Our families come from all over Central Ohio, from all sorts of backgrounds. Indeed, 40% of our students identify as students of color. Academy truly strives to be a rich community of diverse learners. Finally, the last pillar is our commitment to building ethical students of strong character. For over 100 years, Academy has been instilling our foundational five plus two values in our students. Those values are respect, responsibility, honesty, compassion, fairness, moral courage, and integrity. We believe that without a foundation of ethical behavior, even the greatest accomplishments are hollow. Finally, I think it's important to mention what Academy is not. If people know about our school, they assume that since it's filled with high achievers, it must be a pressure cooker school filled with stressed out, hyper-competitive, unfriendly children who are exhausted. That's simply not the case. When you tour our facilities and see our students in action, you see happy, interested, and interesting youngsters. They enjoy their time here at Academy. It's truly a wonderfully warm and nurturing environment. We hope you'll come and take a closer look. So there it is. You, you are the first to, uh, to see the six pillars video that I created. <laughs> oh, I had someone drop off already. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, I hope she's coming back. Um, anyway, uh, would like to, uh, it, as again, as questions occur, please, please chime in. But, uh, I would like to introduce Shaka Arnold. Um, I think Shaka and Susan may have a, a PowerPoint or something to, to present. Um, and I promise. Yes, yes. Welcome again, everybody. It's a pleasure to, to see you all. Um, I like this because it's small and intimate, which is always, there, there's many benefits to that. John, Mr. Warren, I'm gonna ask you, you'll have to give me the ability to share my screen. I'm, I'm trying to right now. Okay. Um, Let's go to security. Okay. And it will, you say, allow participants to just check share screen. It should make it, okay. it should allow you to do that. I think, I think, do, can, do you have it now? Can you I'll, I'll try it now. Yes, I can. Perfect. So I'm going to present. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, the, the, the Zoom format I find um, really helpful and really and, and to keep me kind of focused and succinct with that, any presentation uh, because of the difference in just the modality of looking at a screen and we're not in person. So I usually like to just talk a little about middle school, the middle school age child. And Ms. Carter and I are gonna give you some information about our program and then really leave the time for questions because 
your particular questions will be will be most helpful for you. For you, um, I've done presentations like these, like this, uh, for years. I know Miss Carter has, and John. And the real value is in you all being able to ask the questions that you really want to know the answer to. So. I'll start by saying middle school is a time of a great deal of change, a great deal of change. I apologize for those non-Star Wars fans. <laughs> I, I, I grew up a Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Star Wars, the other episodes and force and the other episodes after and you know the ones that continue the saga and were before the saga are hard for me to follow but uh, and they've changed so much. Uh, the one thing about middle school is that it's a time of change. Uh, it's been said and over and over and over again, it's almost cliche that children between the age, between the grades six through eight, that child goes through more social, emotional, physical development uh, uh, than uh, as much as uh, you know, infants from you know birth to three. Uh, so it's a time of change, and uh, that's the one thing we kind of hang our hat on is to have a, a structure and a program that is very supportive of students throughout this time of change. Because, quite frankly, that's what they need the most. Uh, so this presentation is is not heavy on academics. So I'll, those, and those may be the questions you wanna ask, which is fine, but this is more to give you a sense of the social and emotional support we feel the middle school kids need um, to be successful and to be prepared for high school and beyond. So one of the things that's a, that is a hallmark of our middle school, one of the programs are our middle school activities. I'm not gonna read these, we have in our schedule built in every day between 9.15 and 9.45, we alternate between activities, um, advisory, assembly, affinity group meetings, special assemblies, uh, and class meetings. And when we have activities, these are some of the things our students are involved in. And why, why do we have activities in our program? Because middle school kids need to let down, let their, let, let off some steam. They need to be together with other middle schoolers and their peers and do things that are fun and allow them, allow them to express themselves in many different ways. So we believe that having activities built into the day are important, and are an important part of what we do. And, and they go along with all the other supports that we have built into in the day. One of the other main aspects of our program is advisory. Advi every student each year is assigned an, an advisor. And we have a team system. So we have a sixth grade team, a seventh grade team, and an eighth grade team, which means a sixth grader has a, has an, a sixth grade teacher that they're advisee, advisor, seventh grade teacher, students typically have seventh grade teachers, their advisor, and eighth grade, uh, is consistent with that. And Ms. Carter can talk about advisory because she, as a dean of middle school, does a lot to shape that program. So I'm just gonna ask her to pick up, she can go through this however she likes. So just talk a little bit about advisory, but it's another important part of our program uh, for which we provide students support. Sure, um, the advisor will be the, that person who knows your student the best. Um, they are the connection between home and school. And those relationships last even beyond the year that they may be the advisor. Kids, when they're in high school, even come back and, and visit their advisor because they're really able to create a um, good relationship as both a mentor um, and advocate. And they're also the liaison between um, home and school. Uh, we have a variety of advisory activities, whether it's games, one-on-one uh, -on -one to find out how all the students are doing um, socially as well as academic, uh, academically. And um, sometimes advisories get together and we have advisory challenges. Um, it's just a, it's a wonderful time of day that I think, I know I look forward to and I think the 
the students look forward um, to going to advisory as well. In advisory, we do set goals um, for the year. Um, and um, we have, um, as Mr. Arnold mentioned, we have teams and each grade level team meets once a week. And we, we talk about different things that we do in advisory. And uh, we talk about each of our advisees to make sure that their experience is as personalized as it can be at Academy. We are, and we are um, actively uh, working now, actually. We started this work last fall um, to uh, in, really, really focused in on advisory and uh, our social emotional, lear social emotional learning. So we have some exciting things that we're looking forward to um, next year and in years to come for our kids. Uh, there, I, I, I'm not going to go into the, spe the specifics just because they aren't um, established yet, but we're moving in that direction. So hopefully your children will, will be the will be a part of the, you know, a core part of the community if, if it's right, and we'll, ex we'll definitely experience those, those aspects of our program. But this is also something Ms. Carter can speak to, and this is something called DENS, which um, is another popular program in the middle school. Uh, we, we developed DENS uh, maybe about uh, 10 years ago. Um, and what DENS stands for, it's developing, educating, and nurturing students. We would like all of our students to be leaders. And this gives our eighth graders a chance to be a leader on a, a weekly basis. All the kids in the uh, middle school are put in a single gender um, den and the eighth graders run the dens. They plan the activities. Um, there is a teacher in the room that is um, supervising, but the eighth graders are in charge. This is their um, chance to lead. And in addition to forging friendships and building community, it really helps our um, students and empowers them to um, assume a leadership role. And DENS along with our activities period and advisory really help everyone to get a chance to know each other. It makes our middle school a little bit smaller um, because of the interaction between our three grades. And it helps to promote a very positive school climate. So shifting gears a little bit to talk a little about academics. Uh, students in the middle school choose between three languages, Spanish, Chinese, and Latin. And they take whatever the language that the student chooses, they take that language for three years because essentially that, that three years is the equivalent of one credit um, of language. Uh, and then they move into upper school and have the opportunity to move into a, a level two or honors, but three the, for three years, students take the same language in middle school. We have something in the middle school called, we have classes that are known as allied classes. And there's five allied classes that students in each grade rotate through in the course of the year. They're about six to seven weeks long. They don't go with, we have, we're on a quarter system, four quarters, and these, these five classes have to be, um, we rotate uh, through these classes throughout the course of the year. So you can see six and seven graders take art, all three grades take creative expressions, which is our drama slash theater elective. Every student takes health in each grade. Sixth graders have two classes, Quest, which is another course that is, um, the kind of preview to social emotional learning and self-awareness in the middle school for sixth graders. There are newer students. So we try to, these quest and study skills are classes that offer the support that they need, whether it be support academic, you know, support academics, academic support and kind of social support. Um, seventh and eighth graders take STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, math, a combination of STEAM. I'm sure you've heard of STEAM. I would say that class is more of a design thinking. The design process is more prominent in that class. Uh, students are, are familiar, made familiar with that and uh, do different STEAM and engineering challenges in that course. Coding. And eighth graders have a course called Makerspace, which 
I'm sure if you've been on a, a visit to our school, you've seen outside of our maker space, all these creations um, that our kids make. And, and maker space is, you know, 21st century, for those of you who are a different generation, it's 21st century wood shop almost. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> 21st century wood shop with computers and laser printers and, and laser cutters and uh, all of the technology that goes along with students being able to create um, create uh, products that, that we use around our school and that um, uh, they're able to use in a practical way in their own lives. This is the, our middle school schedule. This is the sixth grade schedule is, this is actually the sixth grade schedule. Um, just to give you a sense, it seems like we have sixth graders on this call. So this is the most relevant, but you can see day starts at 8.05, 9.10. There's a five minute cushion built in there at the beginning of the day. Then we have our advisory activity, class meeting, den, uh, dens, um, assembly that's in that 915 to 945 block. Let me just go back and tell you that we are on a six day letter schedule. So each day is A, B, is in a letter day. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F, six day rotation. And then the, the, rot the, the cycle repeats itself. Lunch, period four, period five. And then flex just alternates for, not alternates, it's at different times for sixth graders than it is for seventh and eighth graders, but that is their end of the day study hall. And that's a great time for students to meet teachers and get homework done uh, and have one-on-one -on -one support. Those students who need one-on-one -on -one support are able to get that during the flex period. And the, the one thing I wanted to show you was from a technology perspective, we use Google Classroom. So this is a sample of a teacher's Google Classroom page. And we, we've, we, we have to, we, you, we, we probably use this more because of the circuit COVID and um, you know, so many things are electronic, but we have always pr pride, pride, been proud to strike a balance between technology and paper, paper planning, uh, usage of paper, kids reading paper books and, and not, and taking a break from technology. But so this is the main kind of um, interface we use. And this is where for every student, the materials and assignments and announcements for every class are found on Google Classroom. And every student has a Google Classroom account with an email. And by the time they're in eighth grade, they're, they're masters at this. Um, I should say too, that a little bit about myself, because I didn't do that in the beginning. This is my third year as a head of middle school. I've been in my 18th year. Actually, 2021 will be, it might be 19 years. Wow, it's 18 or 19. You know, you get to a certain point, you do. I forget my age and I forget how many years I've been doing this, to be honest with you, but it's more than 17 years I've been in middle school education. And uh, I've been, I was at a boys' school. I started my career at a boys' school in Baltimore. And I went to a PK through 12 school in uh, a co ed school in South Florida. And now I'm at Columbus Academy. So, um, just to give you a little background on me, this is my third year in the middle school. And uh, I'm at Columbus Academy. I came to Columbus Academy. I chose to come to Columbus Academy. And it, was, it was a fit also for Marin, but. I'm here because I wanted to be in Columbus in the Columbus Academy. You know, you, for the parents on the call, you, you could probably appreciate the fact that after you get to a certain point in your career, you, did, you and you've been in certain places, paid certain dues, that you want to get to a place where you can you, you decide where you want to go. And I, I came to Columbus Academy because I believe in the school's mission and the school's leadership. So if you you'll you'll be in touch for the, for right now you'll be at your main point of contact will be john warren and christine sia and um nancy velasquez and they'll be your main points of contact and then at, at, at some point when you have specific questions about middle school 
uh, they feel is appropriate for you to ask Susan or myself, you can do that. But there's our information and just put that up there just as a point of note. But right now, while you're in this process, John and the, his and the admissions team are the main points of contact and they do a great job at uh, representing our school. So that's all I have. And Mr. Warren, and whenever we, I'll hand it back over to you. Now, thank you for your attention, everyone. Great. Um, I was muted myself. Um, well, uh, thanks for that overview. Um, the, the idea is uh, hopefully uh, you've got some questions. Um, I'm sure that I would bet that someone's going to ask a question about transition, what transition like looks like coming from away. Uh, and um, so we can talk about that. Um, oftentimes people do want to follow up a little bit more on the academic end of things. Um, uh, if I can give you, uh, just as people think of questions to, to ask, um, I'll mention that uh, our fifth grade, um, going into sixth grade, again, sixth grade is the start of our middle school, and in fifth grade, um, I'm sorry, uh, going into sixth grade, in a typical year, we will have something around 10-ish uh, new students. Uh, we go from uh, this year's fifth grade has uh, 74 students. We will lose, uh, uh, in a typical year, we'll lose uh, two or three through attrition. Uh, sorry, clock ringing, uh, letting us know we're halfway home. Uh, but uh, in a typical year, uh, we will lose a couple of students and our goal is to, be, to enroll something around 80-ish students in the sixth grade. Um, it's, it's, uh, we can be a little bit flexible uh, in terms of that. Let me talk uh, a little bit about the admissions process as you are thinking of your questions. Uh, hopefully all of you ha have, have gotten in and know how to apply, if, if not, Again, that's the whole reason we're here, uh, trying to get people to understand our school, learn about our school, and then go ahead and, uh, and consider applying. Uh, it should be, should be it's a, we hope it's an easy interface online. Uh, it's a package called uh, Blackboard. And if you have any trouble, uh, please, admissions at columbusacademy.org is our uh, email admissions at columbusacademy.org. We are happy, of course, to, to answer any questions. The, the things that, that one needs to complete an application for grade six, uh, there is the short application online. Uh, there is, uh, a, get, we get a transcript from the student's present school. Uh, we get a, two teacher recommendations. Uh, Usually it's a math teacher recommendation and a language arts teacher recommendation. This year you can substitute because of everyone being in, in perhaps either hybrid mode or, uh, or online teachers may not know you as well this year. Feel free to go back a year to your fourth grade teacher. Uh, and it could be an English teach. I'm sorry, for, for the math, it could be math or science. If, if just to make sure that somebody remembers you and, uh, and all that. And the same idea, usually it's, we, we ask for a strict English teacher. This year, we're allowing you to go back a year and it could be an English teacher. It could also be a social studies teacher. We really want someone, again, on the humanities side uh, to, be, to be speaking. And our admissions committee, we want someone who knows the student well. Um, so again, that there's, there's a little bit more flexibility this year. In addition, uh, there's some standardized testing. Uh, we, we hope that students will take, there are a couple other tests we can, we can accept, but only a couple um, and not the MAP test. But there's an ISEE test. ISEE stands for Independent School Entrance Exam. The, the exam can be given a number of different ways. There's a way you can take it at your house uh, online. There's a, a place, uh, an international, uh, actually internationally called uh, Prometrics, uh, yeah. Prometric that is a testing center. Uh, and if you're here in, in if you're here locally, uh, there's a Prometric se uh, Center in Worthington, Ohio. Uh, and 
And finally, we offer the test uh, two more times, once on this coming Saturday and once in early February uh, that you can take, come take the test with us live uh, at Columbus Academy. Um, in addition, finally, there's an interview, a very short interview that's online with a member of the admissions team. Uh, standard kind of interview questions. Do you like school? What are your favorite subjects? What activities do you, do you, have you been involved in? What kind of things do you want to be involved in? Uh, th those sorts of questions and then uh, trying to get a little more to the personality as well. Um, so all that, all those, uh, the application materials need to be in uh, by roughly, uh, there's the, the hard deadline is uh, February 18th, uh, when the admissions committee actually meets, um, soft deadline. Uh, we, we like to have everything in by roughly, uh, just a little before Valentine's day, just to make sure that we have enough time to, uh, to pass the admissions folders around to everybody. 